We'll call, we'll call the 26th regular meeting of Common Council to order. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Berg? Here. Bonet? Here. Doyle? Here. Graf? Here. Manny? Here. Montemere? Here. Moody? Here. Oh, excused. <laughs> yeah. Excused. <laughs> Perez? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Stefan? He's excused also, and the reason Alderman Stefan is not here this evening is his mother passed away this weekend. So, uh, council wishes, we will be sending flowers uh, to the funeral home, and we'll get a card to circulate around the council. Okay. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Wangaman? Here. Warner? Here. Wenninger? I think the next time here. <laughs> <laughs> Fourteen present. Quorum's present. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd move that uh, we approve the minutes of the, the last Common Council meeting and the same stand approved as entered on the record. Move to second that uh, minutes of the previous Council meeting stand approved under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Manny, would you lead us in a pledge, please? I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag. To the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the Republic for which, which it stands, one nation under God, under God indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. These people are just tough to teach. I'm telling you. <laughs> I know. We have one hearing this evening, and that's for his own last two, three, four, and five flat of the South Pier District. Any interested persons wishing to be heard on that? Any interested persons wishing to be heard? Alderman Groff. You are now moved that the hearings be closed. Moved is second the hearings be closed under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Public forum, Pat? No. No. Consent agenda, Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that um, items. 26.1 through 26.5, that all um, RCs be accepted and placed on file, all ROs be accepted and adopted, and we pass all resolutions. Actually, it goes through 26.25. 26.25, that's right. I thought you said five. No, 26.25. Well, I thought you said five oh, also. No, I said 26.1 through 26.5. Okay. At uh, 26.25. That's what you go. said. We know that. No, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All documents from 261 through 2625. All ROs be accepted and filed, RCs be accepted and adopted, and resolutions be put upon their passage. Under discussion. Who said the second? Who had the second? Eleanor Bonet. Oh, okay. Pat, would you call the roll? Bird? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Groff? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemere? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 2626 by Public Protection and Safety recommended denying beverage operator's license 5760 based on her non cooperation with the committee. Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the uh, report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. I move that report of committee be accepted and adopted under discussion. Uh, yes, uh, I'd like to inquire if uh, Ms. Hartman is here to speak on her own behalf. Ms. Hartman? She has not. Go ahead with the proceedings. <clears throat> is there any discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll? Bonnet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Groff? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemere? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried 2627 to 2630 to be referred. 2631. That will be referred also, and there's discussion on that. Alderman 
I heard a beep. No? Alderman Warner. I oh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I guess when I read this document, I did talk to Alderman Groff about it, the finance chair. And I just, uh, I tried to not have a problem with the last sentences in this document, but I still do. And I'd like to make some changes in it and, and refer it to finance that way. And the issue that's contained in the last paragraph, if they feel they want to talk about it, I think they still can do that. So uh, I would like to amend the document. And I would like to do so uh, by amending in the third sentence where it says additional, it says uh, additional, I'd like to amend that to the word, uh, take additional out and insert the word three. Where, oh, where it says additional police officers? Where it says additional. Take additional. Just, it should, it should read recommending the hiring of three police officers, not additional. They're not additional because they're already part on the TO. Correct. So you're taking additional out and adding Taking one? additional out and in its place putting the word three, T-H-R-E-E. -E. And then that, uh, as that reads on, police officers one now and two by the end of 2004 recommends that the documents be referred to the Committee on Finance of the New Common Council. Uh, from that point on, I would like to remove the rest of that sentence. Can I say something? Sure. Else? Go ahead. The word additional is actually taken from the original document. It's not part of this document. So the recommendation is really the only thing that Here. you're going to be acting on. I understand that, but the, the word additional in itself is these are not additional officers, they are on the TO. So it's, it's what they're at, what this document, the intent of it was to ask is to fill the TO at the police department, not to add additional officers. The, the word additional in there makes it sound like we're increasing the size of the police force. And, and I think that that, uh, I don't really, it's, it's semantics, but I think it's an important distinction and I think we should. Okay, that, all I'm saying is that was part of the wording of the original RC 341. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that. Okay, so. You, Okay. Alderman Warner, if I, and I think Alderman Van Akron has the document before us. If I remember correctly, that was for one police officer now, and if the budget. Exactly. Oh. If and there was money in the budget from the state, the other two would be filled. Well, not just the state, the budget in general. Obviously, and we don't the have state. the money. Right. We're not going to hire somebody if we don't have the money. But I think that has to be part of the, that, that was, was part of the last, last meeting, right? it was amended that that 2004 was going out of there, that we're not ha hiring two at the end of 2004. We're going to hire if the budget uh, allows. 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 But and now we got 2004 in there again. Mm -hmm. And that's no longer, well, in, that's not only in there, but if the budget allows isn't in here anymore. It doesn't that was say the that. It just says we're going to hire two by the end of 2004. Doesn't say if the budget and I, could, it. And, I could, and I could agree with making that change also. Because that's the way it came out of public time. protection and, and, and salary and grievance. Public protection came out, we should hire the officer. Salary and grievance said we should hire one officer now and two by the end of 2004 if we can come up with the funding. And now those are gone. And no. instead of that, mm -mm. it says. No. I, I don't believe that was quite right, Alderman Warner. Salary and grievance yeah. came up with we hire one now and we hire two if the budget allows it when the budget time came up, not 2004 was mitted out of there completely. And it was amended last, last meeting. Uh, that's what I was thinking. And, I can, and you can take 2004 out, I'm fine with that, if the budget allows. Because obviously we're not gonna hire any police officers if the budget doesn't allow it. I'm not fine 204. with that. 204. It doesn't say 204. It does now. Not in the recommendation, and that the recommendation is what was amended last time. Mm -hmm. It says it in ours. Huh? It says it in mine. It says in mine. It says add one now and two, two by, by the end of 2004. That's not the part of the recommendation is what I'm saying. After the semicolon, you have your recommendation. That's what was amended last time, saying that uh, you would hire three officers if the council goes on record for a joint dispatch with the county that would be in place by 2005. That was the amendment last meeting. Last meeting was the amendment from was, finance. was uh, finance. Uh, not higher in 2004, was the higher by the budget. Go ahead. If I may. <laughs> finance committee, their last meeting, made a recommendation that um, this came to us originally after our last council meeting, which was on the, um, was it the uh, 8th? 
Oh, that's right. Okay, on the 8th, we were referred this document. At our last finance committee meeting, what we did was we discussed ways that we could fulfill this request, which was to find the funding. One of the ways we, we thought about finding funding, funding was to explore the, um, uh, this joint dispatch with the county. And if that could be in place by 2005, right. there would be additional funding available. And that's why um, I know Alderman Warner is, um, was saying that uh, they should delete that. But this is just a report of, of committee. It's nothing that is going to be voted on by this council, except the phrase in here says that one of the things the finance committee came up with at this point was to go with a joint dispatch. Now, they may recommend something else when this goes back to the new committee on finance. And uh, it may, may take out the word joint and just say, have the county do the entire dispatching for, for the city. But then that is something that this council has to act on those recommendations. So, um, okay. And I guess when I read this, th that's the part that bothers me, is that it is us, it is us saying in there to the new council that if we approve sending this forward with those words in there, that this council in some way agrees with uh, only hiring those police officers if we go to a joint dispatch center. And I feel uncomfortable with that because we haven't debated it on the floor of this council. And I think that part should be taken out. Exactly. And finance can look at all the issues exactly. in finance. You got a minute. Alderman Wangerman. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I'd have to support uh, Alderman Werner on that one. Uh, it always seems that the police department, which has an established TO, uh, is on the short end of the stick. In German, we call it a Stiefkind or a stepchild. And I don't know why the police department is always the stepchild. Other departments who are in public safety and protection have a full TO at all times. The police department doesn't. Somewhere, this council voted to have an authorized strength of the police department. And somehow we have chosen to take the police department and say, well, we can save some bucks here. We can save some bucks there. We'll just go without a couple of more cops on the street. And yet, everywhere you go, people tell me I would support an extra increase in my property tax if it bought me two, three, four more officers on the street. People are worried. They don't like the way things are going on the streets of Sheboygan. We have armed robberies now. We have mini marts being held up. We have drug use. This stuff never existed 20 years ago. It was unheard of. So it, it just really amazes me that we can't seem to ever fill the TO on the police department. I don't know why they always have to be left hanging out in the cold when uh, we can find monies for everything in the world. What are we supposed to tell people if there's somebody hitting you on the head and there's nobody around, call a bus driver? I mean, we've got plenty of bus drivers that aren't doing too much. You know, something has got to be done here. And I think it's about time we stop using the, the police department as a convenient means to boost our budget. If we have to say the two dirty words, raise taxes, then let's say them and let's get some cops on the street where people want them to be. And we've got support out there for that. I talk to a lot of people and they tell me a lot of stuff. Now, it's true. People are going to say, well, you're prejudiced. You're on the police department. Yeah, I'm prejudiced. I want good law enforcement in the city of Sheboygan. I want good fire protection. That's what I'm prejudiced for. And if we have to raise the taxes a couple of bucks, then we got to say those mean, dirty words, raise taxes. Okay. Alderman Perez. Was there a second? I was just going to say, did we get a second? No, we didn't. But hang on. All right, go okay. ahead. Is that okay, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you. I guess... Everything that's being said has, has merit and uh, deserves discussion. My only concern is that we amended a document that was forwarded to this council by the selling and grievance. And all I recall is that document saying we're going to hire one now and two if the, if the budget allows it in 205. Correct. That's all we need to act on tonight, in my opinion. And we can go off in different directions and talk about what's needed and what's not. But that's, that's a, a good discussion that we should have when the next budget comes around. Okay, your second one. Okay. To answer uh, Alderman Wangaman's question about why the TOs was, wasn't filled up in the were 3 short, that was agreement with the police chief that he told a couple of guys low, he felt it was adequate to do that. So, but now with the way things are changing, he feels that he would like to get TO back up. But that was one of the agreements when the budget came around. That, that was discussed. 
Your Honor, you're correct because the uh, chief came in a couple of times and that was this part of going again, keeping the budget down was to take the people off. It wasn't the sovereign grievous. He, that's what he came in with. So it wasn't us. Okay, so uh, do we have this right now? Uh, yes. What I was referring to was the recommendation from from salaries and grievances to finance to hire the three officers. That was the mo most the amending motion last time. Okay. Then finance did come in with the one with uh, going to a joint dispatch. That's really the only recommendation now. It is not a resolution. It's not an ordinance. It's a recommendation. So I've got it that you want to delete the word additional and add the number three and end your recommendation after the words the new common council. So. Anyone have anything else before it goes? Alderman Warner? And ending after the new common council, that's it, so the rest you would strike? Yes. Okay, I'm fine with that. Alderman Montemayor. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, <laughs> this piece of paper came from finance. Now, what was just offered as, as an amendment, is that what finance meant? No, finance meant to this. bring this back to new finance committee, if I may answer, to bring this back to new finance committee with one of the ways to do this, to do what the original request was, was to um, also go on record and explore the, the possibility of a joint dispatch. It can be taken off. I won't support that uh, only because the four members of finance that voted to, to make that recommendation. If, if I'm chair of, of finance again, which I believe I will be or I'm hoping I'm going to be, um, I will remember that this was on there, so I will bring it in at that time again. So otherwise I'll bring it in as my own. Because it doesn't say must, it says explore. Correct. All right, thank you. Okay. Alderman Rainflash. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> um, I agree with Ms. Alderman Groff that what we're really doing is the finance committee is reporting back to us with a recommendation. Um, I was not at that finance committee meeting. What we're voting on is accepting this document saying this is what they recommend to do. There is no resolution attached. There is no ordinance attached. It's simply a report from that committee reporting back to us what they discussed in the recommendation. Um, I'm uncomfortable I mean, this council changing what they're recommending to us when I wasn't there at that meeting, so I also won't support the change. I think it's a good idea. I agree with what we're <coughs> trying to do by hiring additional police officers, but that's not what we're doing. There is no ordinance here. What we're trying to do is just get a report accepted from finance to this common council, and I think we should take their report and, and as is, without changing it. <coughs> Alderman Warner, last time. Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. I did have something I wrote just to kind of address why I feel this way about that sentence in the document. I'm not against finance discussing those issues in finance, although I think that's something that the police department should and the fire department should be on those discussions regarding joint, joint dispatch because we're talking about the health and safety of our citizens in the city and they are the ones who respond to it. So finance shouldn't be saying we're going to have joint dispatch whether you like it or not without studying the facts. We're not saying that. And, I, and I know you're not. But when you, if you just read this raw, that's how it can come out at you. And I, and I guess what I wanted to know is why would we tie the hiring of police officers to whether or not we support, support a joint dispatch center? In the first place, to me, that just doesn't make sense. If we need police officers, which we do, we should hire them. Yes, we need to find the funding. We all know that. We certainly are not going to hire someone and not pay them. We have to remember these are not additional positions. I think that's important. That's why I felt that word really didn't belong in there. These are existing positions on a department's table of organization, and, all, and, and uh, Alderman Van Akron is correct. As part of the budget saving measures, the chief did agree not to fill those positions, but now he's saying he can't do that again for another year. Uh, to tie the hiring of, of needed city employee, especially a public safety employee, to whether or not we can reach a future agreement with another government body does not make sense. I don't care if it's a police position, a fire position, or a public works position. It just simply doesn't make sense to me to tie in hiring of anyone in city government to whether we can reach an agreement with another government body. 
If we want to look at joint dispatch, to me, that's a different issue. Changing the wording of this will not impact in any way the Finance Committee's options for funding these positions. By not taking the wording of this document, I think, I still think that we will be sending what I believe would be a false message to the next council and the next Finance Committee. We will be stating that we fully debated joint dispatch, that it's a great thing and will be done, and that we agree with its implementation just by those words that are on there, even though it is just a report of committee. That's, and that simply isn't so. It's not something that we have debated. It's not something that has been investigated. They looked at it several years ago, three or four years ago. We talked about it with the county. And we haven't debated the issue. I think it's more, far more complex than a two-minute argument, or in, in this case, was turning into a 12-minute argument. Uh, I, I don't think we should be sending this forward to a new council uh, because it's not something that this whole council has debated and says that we can even agree with. And, and in the new council, they can discuss the issue. And I, I, think it, I think it does something to this document that, if nothing else, sends a message out there to the police department that we're really not interested in hiring police officers unless uh, you do something else that we don't even know if it's going to be a good thing or not. So I just think that in that case, we can take that out of there. As Alderman Groff said, they can still discuss this, and we can get public protection involved in there, and the police and fire departments who have to respond from the Joint Dispatch Center, should there ever be one. Uh, and at that time, if it's a good thing, we're probably going to go for it. Uh, I was mentioned that the county sheriff thinks that they could do it. Well, sure, with providing him uh, additional resources, he could. But you know what? The city of Sheboygan could do dispatch for the entire county, too, because they have the same setup the county has. Yes, it's a duplication of services. That's why we're talking about it. But dispatch in the city is not the same as dispatch across the whole county. We have far more calls in the city of Sheboygan than they have across the county, and far more miles of roads and streets and houses that are compacted in a small area. So there's a lot of issues out there, but I just don't think we need to include that in here. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, just to um, answer one of Alderman Warner's question, the reason this is in is because we were charged, we, the Finance Committee, was charged with finding ways that could provide funding for these three police officers. This was one thing that was mentioned. We put it in our report because we didn't have enough time in finance to discuss all the other things that may come up. And so we put it in this report to refer to the Committee on Finance or the new, new committee. We did not debate the issue of jo joint dispatch. We did not say this was going to be done, that was going to be done, because that's not the issue tonight. The issue is only this Finance Committee document, whether or not this, and it was, an issue that came up in finance that said, if we would do this, this would be a possible way to get funding for those three officers, period. Okay, thank you. Maybe next time we have an issue like this, we should have joint meetings with some of the committees to discuss this, and so everybody's on the same page. We're selling grievance, finance, and public protection and safety. Everybody's on the same page. Uh, so we all, all go in the same direction. Pat, would you call the roll, please? This just is on amendment. just on the amendment. Everybody know what the amendment is? Yeah? <laughs> would you read it, please? <laughs> the amendment is to delete, delete the word additional <clears throat> and add the number three and end the uh, recommendation after the new common council. And so that's deleting the rest of the sentence. Doyle. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. No. Moon, oh, excuse me. I forgot Graf. No. <laughs> I'm in the wrong place. Perez. Aye. Rinfleisch. No. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. No. no. Wangeman. Warner, Aye. Wenninger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. Berg, Bonnet. Nine eyes, five no's. Motion carried. Yes. I'll make a motion that as amended, uh, the document be referred to Finance Committee. We move to the second of the document to refer to the Finance Committee. Under discussion, Alderman Ryan Fleisch. I just want to clarify, I hope those are watching at home don't take the no vote to the amendment as 
uh, against the police or against hiring a new police force. To me, it's structural. The Common Council is run on a committee basis. I was not at that committee. I have to accept the report uh, as the committee discussed it and use that as information there. So in no way, I'll, I think most of those no votes would agree with me. Uh, we're just trying to maintain the integrity of the committee structure here. Um, and I will vote to accept it now. Okay. Do you no other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Matters laid over. 2543, a resolution by Alderman Groff and Wangaman authorizing entering to agreement for employee assistant program. Alderman Groff. And I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. You want to take uh, 2544 also? Or? Well, that's a different committee. All right, that's fine. I need a second. It's moved and second. The resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? <coughs> Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. I'm sorry? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 2544, a resolution by Alderman Groff, Stefan, and Bonet. Authorizing transfer of appropriations in the 2004 budget. Alder McGraw. Your Honor, that uh, resolution and uh, 2545, which is a, a resolution by myself, Stefan, and uh, Bonet authorizing the transfer of appropriations. Also in the 2004 budget, I would move that those two resolutions be put upon their passage. Moved and seconded. Two resolutions be put upon their passage. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangerman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 2553 RC by Public Protection Safety recommending filing documents submitting a communication from Street. Tizong Yang requesting removal of a no parking here to corner sign in front of her business and passing the attached ordinance. Alderman Warner. I thank you. I make a motion to accept and file the report of officer and pass the attached ordinance. Report of committee. Moved and second to adopt the report of committee and pass the general ordinance under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, the removal of the parking restrictions will allow Ms. Yang's customers to park in front of her place of business at 13th and Michigan. Uh, the, the outdated the parking zone there that had no parking from here to corner is an outdated uh, zone that dates back to prior to reconstruction of 14th Street. And this will allow people to park right in front of our business. Right now they have to park about almost a whole building down to the east. So that's Public Protection and Safety <coughs> Committee and not uh, Traffic Sergeant looked at this and recommended a change. If there's no other discussion, Pat, would you call the roll? Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Rinfleisch? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. Other matters, Steve? Uh, I think these are on We the still have one on the agenda. Okay, I don't have the only one that's not. Oh, yeah, it's enough. 2653, we just did. 2632. 2632, that will lie over. Oh, finance, okay. I had a line over. That will go to finance in 2633. That's, yeah. That one can be accepted and filed and ordinance to be put upon its passage. It's on your amended page of the agenda. Alderman Warner. I thank Your Honor. I would make a motion to accept and file the report of officer and that the ordinance be passed. Move it to second to accept and file the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, this is from the Plan Commission and it is rezoning, changing the zoning map, Sheboygan zoning map for the South Pier District from Class PPUD pre planned unit development to Class South Pier planned unit development 2004 1. We discussed this at the Plan Commission and, and it's a uh, zoning change in the district. There's no other discussion. Pat, would you call the roll? 
Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. Steve? Uh, 2634 is a committee report by the Building Use Committee with respect to uh, the municipal parking lot at 7th and Penn. That will go to Sheboygan Transit. Alderman Winninger. I would like to say a few words. This is my last day on the City Council, and I represented the 5th District constituents for four years. I represented them honest and fair, and to the best of my knowledge. So the incoming outer person, good luck to you and to all of you. We had our disagreements, all you outer people, but we always came together and respected each other, and I thank you for that. There are three special people at this council, and I call them the pillar of this city council. They became my mentors, my friends, and they will always be my friends. Thank you, Mike Warner. Thank you, Tim Graff. And thank you, Anthony Bonet. You are the greatest. I'd like to thank City Clerk Pat Losey and her staff, Debbie, Sue, and Linda, for all your help. Sometimes I was a ding-dong, but you helped me. <laughs> and now, a very, very special thank you to our Honorable Mayor. Your Honor, it was a privilege and an honor to serve with you on this council. And I thank you what you have done for this city and will continue to do for this city. Keep up the good work. Thank you. I thank you. Now, I will spend more time with my beloved VFW Auxiliary. I will going to improve my golf skills. They need it. But I will continue attending council meetings. I'm going to change aisle. I'm going to sit back there. And I will watch you. Can I say again, danke schön, auf Wiedersehen, not, but I will be back. Thank you. Take care, Ingrid. <laughs> Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. I wish to uh, thank the voters of District 3 for allowing me to serve two terms. It's been an honor and a pleasure serving with the Common Council and the Mayor, and I found the department heads to be especially outstanding, and I thank you for the great cooperation that I found. Uh, individually, I'd like to thank Sue Richards and Chuck Adams for making the liquor licensing go extremely well. I'd like to thank Sergeant Tarkowski for uh, helping me with all the abandoned vehicles. I'd like to thank Matt Livingston, who answered every complaint I put in, despite having uh, uh, just being literally part-time at building inspection. And also, Kathy at Municipal Services Building, who took care of every garbage and mowing complaint that I ever submitted. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman <laughs> Bowman. Well, thank you, Your Honor. Usually at the end of our council year, I'll usually give a short speech about departing council members be it by retirement or by the agony of defeat. I'd like to first speak about Alderman Moody. She's actually not in our presence this evening, but I know very well she's watching on television tonight. So it'll be as if I'm talking directly to you, Betty. <coughs> Betty, you and I were elected together. I can't remember when, but I think it was about, let me think, 100 89. years ago? Something like that. I mean, you kind of know exactly right. who I was mayor. You've served on quite a few committees during your many terms as alderman. It makes me wonder exactly how you really did it. You even filled in when someone would ask you to attend a meeting in place of one of us. That was really dedication, a job well done. Do you remember the saying when we first started on council? Two kicks at the cat. I think you remember it, Mayor. Yes. I know that for sure. That's right. I'm going to say it one more time. Two kicks at the cat. 
When someone would get up more than once to speak on the same subject, they would always refer to it as such. Well, after much convincing of our fellow council members and our mayor, it seemed to finally go away. As pet owners, we took these words very seriously, and I hope never to hear them again in this council room. We know you will miss working with friends you've made during this time, and I know I will continue our friendship for a very long time. But I tell you what, we will be seeing you at garage sales, and don't forget about your eBay business either. We will all miss you. I'm going to move on then to Alderman Weninger, who is departing us also this evening at her last council meeting. And may I, may I direct personally to her? Sure. Thank you. I think we will miss the feistiness that you have shown on this council. Never afraid to work for your constituency or ask questions. Alderman Winninger personally has worked hard for those who lived on or near Camelot Boulevard. She also came prepared for the meetings. I personally think you have served the city well in the short time that you have been here. And I really think we'll be hearing from you again, as I already heard you say. And we will miss you, too. You. Jerry Doyle. Jerry has served a year with our late alderman, Jerry Schneider, and has been my colleague for several years since. Jerry has worked hard for the two districts which he and I both represent, not only by improving them, but also helping improve the entire city. During meetings, he was never afraid to express his very interesting points of view. One thing I will say, he did all of his homework and was well prepared for every meeting which he has attended. I'll miss working with you, Jerry. And I only wish Jerry a good retirement, but the rest of our departing also, older persons the best in all they do. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Warner. I thank your honor. I did these alphabetically this evening. Uh, DMW. It's got a little bit of a ring to it. Uh, but I'll start with Alderman Doyle. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> Probably one of the most interesting, intelligent, and stubborn persons I've ever met. One day he's on your side on this issue, and the next day he's against you on another. Yet always, whether he agrees with you or does not, always a gentleman when the debate has ended no matter the outcome. And that's the way a council should function. Alderman Doyle has been an extremely valuable member of the Public Protection and Safety Committee. As vice chairman, Jerry oversaw the licensing function for I believe it's two past, uh, two past years. And, and he's worked very hard with the licensing clerk to streamline and, and improve the liquor licensing process to a point where it is much more effective than ever before. Jerry has been a strong advocate of building inspection and worked hard to address the needs of the city and his district in maintaining our neighborhoods and their needs. Jerry has really never missed a beat except for perhaps once. You see, I can guarantee you one thing, I do not have a white horse. They are not allowed in the city. But Alderman Doyle has been an active and hardworking member of the Common Council and his efforts have made Sheboygan a better place to live for all of us. Alderman Doyle, I thank you for your service to your constituents and the city of Sheboygan, and especially working with you really has been a, a, a really good thing for our committee and, and for the other things we've done together, and I do appreciate it. Next is Alderman Moody. Alderperson Moody has been a servant to her district for, I think it's 14 years. I could be off a little on that, but Betty has been involved in all the major decisions that Sheboygan had, has moved Sheboygan forward in the past decade. I have had the privilege of working with Betty on public protection and safety for at least three years. Uh, she was on our committee this year, once before, and then uh, the first year I was on the council, I think, with uh, now State Senator Libem. She was on the committee with us at that time, I think, also. She's been a strong supporter of our city's police and fire departments, as well as building inspection and public works. And Betty has served on many committees, uh, public works among them and others, and always with distinction, keeping in mind the needs of the people in her district and the city at large. Never afraid to ask a question, and always a pleasure to work with. Betty, the council will miss you, and so will Sheboygan, and I thank you for your years of unselfish service to the city of Sheboygan. And I did get those pictures 
on about Blue Harbor Resort and the cruise ship that was in there on this CD, and I was going to give them to you tonight, so I'm going to have to deliver them now since you're not here. But they are on that CD, and it only took about two minutes. Alderman Wenninger. Uh, all the person Ingrid Wenninger is a person whose presence brings smiles to everyone's face. Ingrid has served Sheboygan and its people very well. On the Public Protection Safety Committee, Finance, and Salary and Grievance, Ingrid has served, Sheboy has served Sheboygan uh, with its best interests in mind. Ingrid also served on strategic fiscal planning and helped us to hold our budget to virtually no increase in the levy this past year. She served on the Mayor's uh, International Committee, the 50th anniversary of the Co Korean War Commemorative Committee, among others. She's brought an insight and opinion to the Council that is not likely to be replicated by anyone. Her can-do attitude and unflinching work ethic should be admired by all of us. Ingrid is also a friend, a real joy to be around, and I will miss her on the Council. She has assured me that she will not let the Council off the hook. And she made that statement quite well. And we'll work in the background to ensure our success, the cities and the Councils. To one of the nicest and most wonderful people I've ever met, Ingrid, I'll miss you in Seoul, Sheboygan. Thank you. Anyone else have anything they want to say? Before we adjourn, I just want to say Alderman Doyle, Alderman Winninger, and Alderman Moody. Alderman Moody couldn't be with us this evening. She isn't feeling well. But I'd like to thank you for your years of service on this council. Each one did an excellent job. We appreciate it, and I'm sure your constituents do too. And good luck in the future, no matter what you do, good luck in the future. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Alderman, somebody beep. Alderman Draw. <coughs> As this year's past council president, I thought I'd just say um, thank you to all, all the council members um, working so hard this, this past year. Because, and I know um, whoever will take um, the place of uh, myself um, will take my place um, that um, they, I'm sure, will get your support and um, you'll be able to deal with them. And then to the three people that will be leaving, um, I want to thank you for your service. Betty, I worked with early in my former career when I was on the council before that, not this time. So. I've worked with her and I, I know how she operates and, um, and um, she was always um, there supportive. Jerry has been on two committees with me this past year and um, I thank him for all that he's done for that. And to Ingrid, who was my vice chairman of, of finance, I, I just want to thank her special, specially because um, she did take my place on several committees and then also she, um, she did serve on strategic fiscal planning because I supposedly had two votes but um, couldn't utilize them both, so we gave her one, and um, I appreciated her support. Thank you. I will move to adjourn, sign and die. He beat ya. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Opposed?